On this week's episode of Never Stop Learning, we will be traveling from Hamilton up to our goal of Thunder Bay so that we can attempt to climb Sleeping Giant. This 23 kilometer hike has some of the highest cliffs in all of Ontario, but first we must get there. Day one of our trip has us traveling up Highway 6 to our destination of Tobermory, where we will stay the night. Key points of interest that we want to see along the way are Lion's Head Provincial Park, as well as the shipwrecks of Big Tub Harbor. Lion's Head Provincial Park currently requires a permit to park at the entrance, but there isn't any staff on site, so you will need to purchase your permit beforehand or on your phone as long as you have a cell signal. We didn't know beforehand, but it wasn't a problem. The All Trails app, which was the one we used to organize the trip, stated that the hike was two kilometers each way to arrive at the cliffs. But it seems the short trail is currently closed, so our hike was closer to 3.5 kilometers of very rocky terrain. We managed though, and the views didn't disappoint. Next, we checked into our hotel and popped over to see the sunken ships of Big Tub Harbor. On August 23, 1885, the sweepstakes hit a rock near Cove Island and sank in shallow water, close to the light station. She was later dragged into Big Tub Harbor, where she has rested to this day. The city of Grand Rapids was a double-decker steamship working the coastal trade between Owen Sound and the villages of Manitoulin Island and the Bruce Peninsula. On the evening of October 29th, 1907, a fire broke out aboard the ship. A tugboat attempted to drag it away from the dock. It then drifted into Big Tub Harbor, where it eventually rolled over and sank. Thanks for watching this episode of Never Stop Learning and coming along with us for our trip. We are just getting started though. Tomorrow we board the Chichimong Ferry and head for Manitoulin Island. We are on our road trip. We are on day two, about to board the Chichimong Ferry. It's 7.35 on a Tuesday morning and we're in line to, to drive onto a boat. That's gonna take us across the Georgian Bay to Manitoulin Island. The Chichimong Ferry was first launched over 45 years ago in September of 1974. At a length of 111 meters, this ship can hold 650 passengers as well as 140 vehicles. The word Chichimong means the big canoe. It was a shortcut that we are using to travel from Tobamori, across Georgian Bay, and on to Manitoulin Island. We parked our vehicle inside the hold of the ship, then everyone exited their cars and headed above deck. We gathered to watch the crew lower the giant door on the front of the ship once everyone was inside. And we were off. From driving our car onto the ship to taking off was approximately 10 minutes. They were very quick and organized. As the ship took off, it was the end of September and the cold wind off of the bay was very strong, especially once the ship started to move. I hung out on deck as long as I could, but finally headed back inside and took a seat to relax for the two hour trip. Once we arrived at our destination, everyone headed back below deck and got into their cars. As the door to the ship opened, all of the vehicles inside started pouring out. Big ones at first, like RVs and transport trucks. 
followed by smaller cars like ours. We had arrived on Manitoulin Island. Our first stop upon arrival was the Cup and Saucer Trail. Named for its unique shape, these sharp cliffs and elevated edges are the result of limestone's high resistance to the flow of water and glaciers over thousands of years, paired with the rocks that have eroded much faster. There are four designated lookout points along the hike, each revealing millions of trees that cover the island. Many people describe this view as one of the best they have ever seen, and standing here, I have to agree. The trail offers multiple routes to the lookouts, so of course we chose the adventure trail. So this is the adventure trail marked by these yellow circles. It basically scales down the cliff. You just hold on to these roots. I think we can do it. Don't fall in the pit of death. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, I can see light at the end. Man, be careful, come this way. I wanna go in the crack. Don't go in the crack, I wouldn't go in the crack. Ma'am, I'm just trying to keep you alive. As you fall in the crack. <laughs> What's your sense of adventure? <laughs> you fucking bad scale. <laughs> Ma'am, just live. I do what I want. This should be the other side here. Oh, you can go down there. Oh my god, it just keeps going down. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, be careful. This was more adventure than I was expecting. Just got a sharp rock in my anus. I think maybe this way. Oh no! <laughs> Is it okay? Oh yeah. I got you. <laughs> Alright, let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> you don't lag, sir? No. Oh, the next part's not good. It might be good, but I don't think I'll like it. Do you want me to do it first? You're good? Careful. What is it like in there? Is there a way to climb up? Much. So does the trail keep going around? Yeah, just it's over here now. Oh. Alright. You wanna get a birth in me? <laughs> no, you come around. I'll meet you on this side. Get a birth in me. Okay. Kai. <laughs> you can do it. No! <laughs> 20, what was it, 28 hours? 128 hours? <laughs> and cut my foot off. Yay! She made it! This is the one that I saw in the photo. Oh, is it? I can't tell yet. It looks like it goes this way. And this way. Yep, to the top.
We did it. We made it back to the top. Yeah. Adventure zone! Woo. After another full day, we dragged ourselves down the mountain and began the drive to our next Airbnb on St. Joseph's Island. Thanks for watching this episode of Never Stop Learning. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already and join us for day three of our trip as we cruise the coast of Lake Superior towards our goal of hiking Sleeping Giant. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Never Stop Learning. On today's show, we are cruising the coast of Lake Superior and checking out five places to stop on the way to Sleeping Giant. Remember to hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Number five on our list is actually two locations that are very close to one another and easily accessible as they are just off the Trans-Canada Highway. Alona Bay Lookout and Agawa Bay Scenic Lookout. They both offer amazing views of Lake Superior. Alona hugs the lake, letting you cool off and get your feet wet, if you choose to. And at the same time, this spot gives you a stunning view of this beautiful rock formation. Meanwhile, Agawa Bay Scenic Lookout sits halfway up a mountain giving you an exceptional lookout onto the coast. The coast here is dotted with small islands. This lookout is also a great spot to stop and have a picnic, as long as you've brought it with you, as there is no food available on site. Both views are incredible, and if you have time to stop at both, I would seriously recommend it. They also offer free parking and give you a chance to stretch your legs along the Trans-Canada Highway. Number four on our list is Pukaskwa National Park. Located south of Marathon, it is known for its beautiful views and is home to the White River Suspension Bridge. To access this bridge involves an 18 kilometer day hike across the park. Along our hike, we came across pockets of forest that had been through a controlled burn and now a few years later are starting to bloom again. The walk through the marsh is split up with boardwalks that let you walk out over the water, which make for some amazing panoramic shots. Number three on our list is Chippewa Falls. From far away, it is difficult to grasp the scope of how big this river truly is, but it is really enormous. The falls measure in at a height of 25 feet. One safety tip that I want to mention is if you are visiting these falls during the spring runoff or after a heavy rainstorm, please be careful as the river can quickly rise up and sweep you away. Chippewa Falls is also the halfway point of the entire Trans-Canada Highway. The highway runs from Victoria, BC to St. John's, Newfoundland and this exact spot is directly in the middle. We discovered number two on our list by accident. After a few hours of driving, it was time for a break, so we noticed a rest stop along the highway and decided to stop and stretch our legs. Old Woman Bay, which is named for the face that can be seen on the side of the 200 meter cliffs to the left of the bay. The bay has a beautiful beach and the weather was incredible. It is Lake Superior though, so the water is brisk all year round, but on a hot summer day, it would be very refreshing. This is also where Old Woman River runs into Lake Superior and the contrast in colors and watching them blend together was amazing to see. Finally, number one on our list of places to stop on the way to Sleeping Giant, Weemit Canyon. I don't think either of us knew what we were gonna find here. As we drove in, I thought this destination was gonna be a bust. 
Heavy fog had set in and we really couldn't see very far. We parked the car and began the half kilometer hike, hoping to be able to see anything. Just as we reached the first lookout, the fog lifted. I had no idea this place even existed. It is sort of like a mini Ontario Grand Canyon. It is also home to Eagle Canyon Zip Line and Suspension Bridge, which is the longest and tallest in Canada. At a height of 152 feet above the canyon floor, this 600 foot bridge extends across the canyon. We got to see some incredible views from this lookout before the fog decided to roll back in. So that's five places we seriously recommend visiting on the way to Sleeping Giant. There is also two honorable mentions. Just outside Wawa, you will find Scenic High Falls, a beautiful waterfall that can be viewed head on. The second is Agazaban Falls. This 100 foot waterfall cascades into Agazaban Gorge, flowing over a 2.6 billion year old rock face. Thanks for watching this episode of Never Stop Learning. Subscribe if you haven't done so already and join us for the finale. Tomorrow we climb Sleeping Giant. Hello and welcome to this episode of Never Stop Learning. On today's show, we will be attempting to climb Sleeping Giant. But before that, I wanted to show the review for this hike that started our road trip. Conditions were amazing. Myself, however, I wanted to die. The climb to the top is no joke. Very steep. It took seven hours total with a 30 minute break at the top. Definitely go earlier in the day as I started at 1215 and didn't get to my car until 723. I wanted to cry, which I did. I wanted to break my leg just so I wouldn't have to walk back, but rather go via helicopter or something rather than walking myself but instead I endured it and got heat exhaustion. I could barely bend my legs, so never mind lifting them. I am now laying in bed writing this to tell you that I currently hate my life and have cried multiple times due to pain and exhaustion. Here we are at the entrance to Sleeping Giant Trail. We're gonna start our eight kilometer bike to the bottom of the mountain and then we will do our hike up. All right, wish us luck. This could be our famous last word. Thank you. See ya. See ya. If you are able to bring a bike, it will make this hike a lot more manageable. We biked as much as we could, but there were still a few rocky sections that made us get off and walk. Overall, they were very useful. All right, so we made it this far. We they said eight kilometers, but we were able to complete it. 5.75. So we're already ahead of the game. Are you ready to continue? Do you want, how do you feel? As we hiked up, it continued to get steeper and steeper. Suddenly, the trail opened up to a large meadow that was surrounded by mountains. The views were magnificent, but we were still just getting started. All right, how are you doing? This is probably the hardest thing I've ever done. My heart rate is consistently at like 150. So I might need a rope rescue. I'd say we're halfway. <laughs> not a good sign. <laughs> That's not comforting at all. <laughs> I thought the hogs too. <laughs> After pushing ourselves to our limits, we finally made it to the top of Sleeping Giant. Anna was happy to hang out at the first lookout, but I wanted to find the infamous Top of the Giant lookout at the end of the trail, so I continued on. The top of the Mesa is not well marked, but after a few wrong turns, I finally found it. Up here, there are no signs, no guardrails, just an unobstructed view of the world's biggest lake from one of the highest points in all of Ontario. 
At a height of 1,250 feet above Lake Superior, the lookout here is the equivalent of over four Statue of Liberties stacked on top of each other. The ascent is incredibly steep and it is no walk in the park. Once you get to the top though, the views definitely make it worth the hike. If you are enjoying this video so far, then please hit the thumbs up button as it really helps new people to find this channel. We just completed Sleeping Giant. Thumbs up, we did it. How many steps did you do? Like 23,000. That was the hardest thing I have ever done. If anyone is thinking about doing it, just keep in mind that we got probably about three quarters of the way up and I just cried on the side of the mountain for probably 15 minutes. And then Chad said, keep going, you can do it. And then after a while, I got so annoyed with him not leaving that I just decided to I wasn't leaving there. you behind. I was like, let's do this, we can make it. And then we got to the first lookout and I felt very lightheaded. So we were at the top, thankfully. So we had made it to the top. Yes, and there were a couple, there were three lookouts, no four I think in total, um, that just went flat across the mountain. So then I told Chad, I said, keep going and then just let me rest here because I'm probably going to need a helicopter rescue. Yes, yes. So then he left and I proceeded to vomit twice. So oh. I So that's it, we did it. If you enjoy hiking, I would recommend this hike. It is very difficult, but at the same time, very rewarding. When we got back to Thunder Bay and we're talking to some of the locals about it, the first question they asked was, did you make it to the top? We very proudly said yes. Thanks for watching this episode of Never Stop Learning and coming along with us for our road trip. The world is full of amazing places, and the question is, where are we headed next? Make sure to subscribe and join us on our next adventure.